Blow, by Charles Hoyfort, Part 1, Chapter 18H. The most circumstantial of the stories appears in the Journal of the Society for Psychical Research, November, 1893. Miss M. Scott writes that, upon the afternoon of the 7th of May, 1893, between 5 and 6 o'clock, she was walking upon the road near St. Boswell's, Roxburghshire, when she saw ahead of her a tall man who, dressed in black, looked like a clergyman. There is no assertion that this figure looked ghostly, and there is a little circumstance that indicates that the figure, or the living being, was looked at more than casually. Having considerable distance to go, Miss Scott started to run, but it occurred to her that it would not be dignified to run past this stranger, so she stood still to let the distance increase. She saw the clerical-looking man turn a corner of the road, the upper part of his body visible above the low hedge, he was gone in an instant. Not far beyond this vanishing point, Miss Scott met her sister, who was standing in the road, looking about her in bewilderment, exclaiming that she had seen a man disappear while she was looking at him. One of her present thoughts is that teleportations, back and forth, often occur. There are many records, some of which may not be yarns, or may not be altogether yarns, of persons who have been seen far from where, so far as those persons themselves knew they were at the time. See instances in Gurney's Phantasms of the Living. The idea is that human beings have been switched away somewhere, and soon switched back, and have been seen away somewhere, and have been explained to the perceivers as their own hallucinations. It may be that I can record a case of a man who was about to disappear, but was dragged back in time from a disappearing point. I think of the children of Clavo, who were about to be taken into a vortex, but were dragged back by their parents, who were not susceptible. Data look as if there may have been a transporting current through so-called solid substance, which opened and then closed, with no sign of a yawning. It may be that what we call substance is as much open as closed. I accept, myself, that there is only relative substance, so far as the phenomenal is concerned. So I can't take much interest in what the physicists are doing, trying to find out what mere phenomenal substance really, or finally is. It isn't, or it is intermediate to existence and non-existence. If there is an organic existence that is more than relative, though not absolute, it may be the substantial, but its iron and lead and gold are only phenomenal. The greatest seeming security is only a temporary disguise of the abysmal. All of us are skating over thin existence, 